Twilight Princess originally started development as The Wind Waker 2, but after hearing how much fans wanted to see a return to a more realistic Zelda, and after the massive popularity of Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy, the scene was set for Twilight Princess, a dark, epic story set centuries after Ocarina of Time. While the game certainly has its flaws, every time I play through Twilight Princess it just gets better and better. So, like we've done before with Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask and The Wind Waker, let's run through some obscure secrets and trivia in Twilight Princess that you might not know about. Twilight Princess's fishing hole is run by Henna, the younger sister of Koro, the lantern oil salesman from Farron Woods, and Iza, who runs the Rapids Ride minigame. Henna's cabin is filled with her various possessions, which she invites Link to look at, triggering various dialogue. If Link looks at her hat, she'll make a snide remark about how it's generally considered rude to wear a hat indoors like Link does. The book on the lower shelf is apparently titled The Legend of the Hylian Loach, Twilight Fish, and her canoe is apparently only ever used when she has a boyfriend to take out in it. If he looks at the pot stored up high on a shelf, she'll admit that she's heard stories of people who go around breaking every jar they see. If Link rolls into the walls or her desk, or into the nearby fish tank, Henna will scold him. If he continues to do this, she'll kick him out, and won't let him fish until he apologises. The most interesting of Henna's possessions, though, is a photograph on the wall of the fisherman from Ocarina of Time's fishing hole. Henna describes him as one of Hyrule's legendary master fishermen, and claims to be descended from him, though she admits she can't prove it. There might be some truth to this, however, as immediately after talking about him, Henna begins to scratch her back, just like Ocarina of Time's fishermen. Gways are recurring bird enemies. They debuted in Ocarina of Time, and have since appeared in Majora's Mask, Skyward Sword, and Twilight Princess. Interestingly, Gways often have a strong connection with rupees. In Skyward Sword, they can be found carrying rupees in the sky, and as I mentioned in my Majora's Mask Secrets video, there's a single Gway found circling Clock Town who'll begin to drop rupees if Link plays one of the temple songs nearby. Twilight Princess's Gways are no different. They can be found in a couple of places in the game, like Hyrule Field and the Kakariko Cemetery, often flying in large flocks in the distance. If Link takes the time to shoot all of them down, he'll be rewarded. A large amount of rupees will fall from the sky. Barnes is the bomb maker in Kakariko Village, a middle-aged, somewhat cowardly man who sells Link various types of explosives. Understandably for a bomb shop, Barnes's store is plastered with signs banning the use of open flames. But Link isn't best known for respecting the rules of other people's houses, so he can pull out his lantern in the bomb shop. If he's close by to Barnes, the bomb maker will angrily scold him, but if he's a little further away, Barnes will pull down his welding mask, slam his fist on the desk, and activate a water sprinkler directly above Link, soaking him and extinguishing the lantern. Sometimes the best things about games aren't the huge secrets or extensive easter eggs, but the little details, and Twilight Princess is full of them. One of my favourites is how, if Link opens a dungeon door, dust and dirt will crumble away. This isn't just a part of the door's animation. If he's already opened this door before, no dust will fall, as it's already been knocked off by Link. Chew jelly is gathered by killing chews, amorphous blobs of living slime, and bottling up their remains. Depending on the colour of chew slain, the resulting jelly will have different effects on Link, often the same effects as similarly coloured potions. Red chew jelly functions like a red potion, restoring 8 hearts, blue jelly works like a blue potion, restoring all hearts, yellow jelly works like lantern oil, and purple jelly will have one of a few random effects. A link between Chew Jelly and potions isn't new. The Wind Waker featured Doc Bandom, a mad scientist character who'll whip up potions for you depending on which colour of jelly you provide. Red Jelly makes red potions, blue makes blue, but unlike Twilight Princess, you can find and trade in green Chew Jelly, which creates green potions that replenish Link's magic meter. Twilight Princess, of course, doesn't feature a magic meter, explaining Green Chew Jelly's absence in the game, but it did, at one point in development. In fact, the magic meter was probably cut from the game pretty close to release. We can even see it in a screenshot on the game's box. 
and green chew jelly still exists in the game, and was likely once intended to replenish Link's magic meter. If a yellow and a blue chew merge together, they'll form a green chew. This doesn't work in the GameCube version for whatever reason, only the Wii and HD versions. A yellow and a blue chew are only found together in one spot in the game, in the Cave of Ordeals. But if this does happen, you can kill the green chew and bottle yourself some green chew jelly. This item doesn't do anything at all, obviously because we don't have a magic meter. In fact, in the Wii version, it doesn't even have a description. It's not meant to be obtainable. However, you can gather green chew jelly in the HD version and they've added a description, mentioning that the item is completely useless. This isn't the only secret colour of chew jelly in the game. There's another type too, rare chews. Rare chews are kind of like shiny Pokemon. They're golden and sparkling and can only be found in very specific situations. Rare Chew Jelly also functions just like one of the game's other potions, Great Fairy's Tears, which fully replenishes Link's hearts and doubles his strength for a little while, causing him to glow an orange colour while powered up. It's pretty well known by now that in the HD remaster, screenshots from Breath of the Wild's first trailer can be seen in the Fine Goods and Fancy Trinkets Emporium in Castletown. This is the shop that eventually becomes the Mallow Mart but at first is so snobbish that Link can't enter unless he has his shoes polished. Even when he does this, however, he can't actually afford anything, as even the cheapest items cost more than the maximum wallet size. The fancy trinkets emporium is decorated with opulence, fine marble statues, expensive carpets, and framed paintings, which are swapped out for framed pictures of Mallow himself when the shop is bought out. It's these artworks that were changed to screenshots from Breath of the Wild in the HD version, but in the original game, they're paintings of palaces and castles. At first, this doesn't seem as interesting as screenshots from Breath of the Wild, but these paintings are actually photographs of real-world places. Leeds Castle, found in Kent in England, and the Château de Vauvicomte, a palace in France. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, leave a like or subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content. Be sure to check out all the other episodes of this series I've done covering Ocarina of Time, The Wind Waker, and Majora's Mask, with the playlist link in the description down below. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.